Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski. This video covers an organic chemistry lab experiment that deals with spinach pigment separation and analysis by column chromatography and TLC, thin layer chromatography. This is the pre-lab portion of it. So for the procedure, you'll read through the procedure in the lab manual, which hopefully you have already done or will be doing soon. Then view this narrated PowerPoint presentation, watch the videos of the experiment, complete the associated notebook and post lab template file on Google Docs and then submit it to Canvas when you're done, complete the lab homework on saplinglearning.com and then take the quiz for this experiment on saplinglearning.com. So for experiment theory, we're gonna deal with spinach leaves today and those contain many different kinds of pigments that are involved in photosynthesis. These pigments vary in polarity and can be separated by either TLC or column chromatography, which we're gonna talk about today. The stationary phase is packed into a column in column chromatography. In this experiment, it's silica gel, which is a very polar compound. The mobile phase in column chromatography is a solvent that moves through the column either by gravity or under pressure. Pigments are gonna be extracted from spinach leaves. That pigment mixture is gonna be loaded onto the top of a column. The pigments are then gonna be flushed down through the stationary phase by the solvent mobile phase. The pigments will travel down the column at different rates based on their polarity, and the more polar pigments will adhere more strongly to the stationary phase and they are gonna move more slowly. That's gonna allow us to separate the pigments in spinach leaves into individual components and fractions. So here's a little brief tutorial about how column chromatography works. It starts with a glass column, then that gets filled with a stationary phase, and today's stationary phase is silica gel. You'll add solvent to that column and then allow it to percolate down through, drain through the bottom, and while it's doing that, the spaces between the silica gel particles are gonna get solvated. Solvent's gonna take up those spaces, and then you've got a solvated column. Then we're gonna take a mixture and load it onto the top of the column and get some separation. Now in this example, there's a two component mixture that's represented by blue circles and red circles. So in this example, we're gonna put the mixture solution on top of the column. And in this example, the blue spheres, there are molecules that are more polar than the red molecules. Therefore, the blue molecules have a higher affinity for the stationary phase than the red molecules. And the blue molecules are therefore gonna be held back more. So when I start this movie, see what happens. They start together originally, but then as they go along, the red ones move out in front of the blues, and as they exit the column, they can be collected in their own vessel. Then you can change collection vessels and catch the next fraction. So this is the essence of what we're gonna to do today with the spinach pigments. Some safety items for today include, we're gonna be working with the solvent acetone, that's volatile and flammable. We're gonna be working with hexane, which is also volatile and flammable. We've got silica gel, which is a dust inhalation at hazard. You have to make sure you don't get that in your lungs. Uh, you want to avoid skin contact with all of these reagents as much as possible, and then also avoid breathing the vapors, so you're going to work in a well-ventilated space. Procedure for extracting spinach pigments is taken from a publication in the Journal of Chemical Education 2004. This is the best procedure I've found for doing this extraction. It involves squeezing frozen spinach leaves between some paper towels to remove water, followed by grinding them in a mortar and pestle with sand and anhydrous magnesium sulfate. And the big idea here is you wanna get rid of all the water uh, so that the extraction of the organic pigments works better. Then the resulting solid is extracted with acetone. You'll decant the pigment solution away from the solids and then completely evaporate the acetone to give a green residue. To prepare a silica gel column, you're gonna do the following. You'll start with a five and three quarter inch glass pipette clamped to a ring stand, push a piece of cotton into the tip, add a two to three milliliter, millimeter layer of sand on top of the glass uh, or the, co uh, the cotton wool. The sand in, and the cotton are meant to just uh, supply a support for the stationary face to sit on. They don't do any separating. They're there just for uh, a solid base for the stationary face. And that's when silica gel comes in next. So you're gonna add a six to seven centimeter layer of silica gel. That's what actually does the separating. And then top it off with a two to three millimeter layer of sand. That sand, the only purpose of that is just to protect the top of the column. So then we're gonna separate spinach pigments by column chromatography. 
And so we'll add hexane to the top of the column until it drips out the bottom. That's going to solvate the column like we saw in the demonstration where the uh, green solvent filled up the spaces between the particles. Then you're going to dissolve the pigment residue in about a half a milliliter of hexane and pipette that onto the top of the column. You'll add a little bit of hexane to push those pigments onto the silica gel. First you, you let the pigment solution percolate down, then you add a little bit of hexane to kind of chase them out of the sand and, and seep them onto the silica gel. Then you're going to elute with a 90-10 mixture of hexane acetone, so it's a solution that's mostly hexane but has a little bit of acetone in it, and that'll move the pigments down the column. You're going to collect the yellow beta carotene fraction, which is the first compound off the column because it's the least polar substance in the mixture. And then there's a gray fraction that you should be able to collect too. So collect those two in separate tubes. Then flush the remaining pigments down the column with pure acetone and collect those in another tube. So we're going to need to find a solvent system for TLC analysis. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to prepare actually three TLC plates um, by spotting the crude green pigment solution before you do had done any column separation uh, at the bottom of three different TLC plates. Then we're going to develop each plate using a different mobile phase. And for example, today, the mobile phases that we picked for you are pure hexane, a 70-30 mixture of hexane and acetone, and a 50-50 mixture of hexane and acetone. So you're going to want to prepare developing chambers uh, for those, uh, three different developing chambers. And if you're not familiar with TLC, um, you should really go back and look at one of the previous videos that describes that in detail. This uh, video assumes that you've seen TLC before. So then you put the three different plates in the three different solvent systems and develop them and decide which one gives the best uh, uh, separation. So uh, once you have an optimal solvent picked out, then uh, what you'll do is spot a TLC plate with your beta carotene fraction that you separated in the column chromatography step, the gray fraction that you separated in the column chromatography step, and the third fraction, which is the green column flush fraction. So you'll have three spots down at the bottom of the plate, a yellow, a gray, and a green. Then develop that plate with the optimal solvent system that you determined on the previous slide. And then you can identify pigments. So what you'll be looking for are um, the identities of, of the different pigments that separate out. So uh, these are the compounds that are known to be in spinach leaves, and so you can Find, do a pretty good job of probably finding most of them or of all of them. Maybe some of them won't be visible, but you should catch most of them. They are arranged here in order of polarity with the high polarity ones, uh, or har, sorry, har, high RF value ones towards the top and the low RF value, uh, value ones towards the bottom. Then calculate the RF value of beta carotene. So one of the points of this experiment is to understand the effect that mobile phase polarity has on spot mobility in chromatography. So um, what you'll see as you go through this experiment is that increasing the mobile phase polarity causes all solvent or all spots to move faster. And the reason for that is that the solvent polarity affects the accessibility of binding sites on the silica gel. So here's a cartoon that tries to explain that. So in this example, uh, in a nonpolar solvent, you can see a silica gel particle in the middle, uh, which has got OH groups on its surface. Those are very polar. The hexane doesn't interact very strongly with those uh, OH groups with the surface of the silica gel. So that silica gel particle is, is fairly open to binding with all different types of um, materials. So all the pigments will bind more strongly to that stationary phase because it's very open and accessible. Um, this next slide figure shows what happens when you add some acetone. So acetone is a polar solvent and it can hydrogen bond with the silica gel stationary phase. So in this diagram you can see some of the acetone molecules are binding with some of the OH groups on the silica gel particle and those hydrogen bond interactions they're essentially blocking some of the binding sites on silica gel. So this silica gel particle which has acetone stuck in various places isn't able to bind any pigments as well as before because now some of its binding sites are being uh, occupied. So that's the big idea with how polarity of solvent affects mobility in TLC.